What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the top 10 Hall Effect gaming keyboards from 2024, showcasing some of the best of the best that came out this year. And yes, these are strictly Hall Effect keyboards capitalizing on the rise of the Rapid Trigger SOCD, really just hype that's been taking the gaming market and the keyboard scene by storm the last few months. And this completes a trifecta. We've had top 10 gaming mice, top five gaming headsets, and today, top 10 gaming keyboards. If you see anything you like, I'm gonna have them all listed for you guys in the description so you can check them out if you're interested, add them to your wish list for the holiday season, and keep an eye out on some price drops with Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Hopefully, you can get some good deals on a new keyboard if you're in the market. And by the way, we will be doing sound tests for all 10 keyboards. So you could hear how the switch sounds in that particular build with the case and the materials. But instead of doing each one for their segment, which would just be breaking up the video, we're gonna have them all compiled at the end of the video, back to back to back, so you can hear how they sound in comparison. Starting us off today at the number 10 spot is gonna be the Melgeek Made 68. A very clean looking minimalist board that's a nice pop of color in the keycaps, highlighted by a nice light bar behind the keyboard that also makes it stand out on your desk. And they make this in a ton of different model and color options as well, so you can really match it to your setup. While the keyboard is 95% plastic, I think it's well made and feels really nice to type on, especially with the three layers of internal dampening inside to complement their smooth kale green horned switches. Now this model is the $120 entry edition, which really isn't too bad for the price, but they do also make a pro and an ultra model that have upgrades like full aluminum body with carbon fiber plates as well, which definitely looks badass. They have different colors and switch options. It also gets an 8K Hertz pulling bump from the stock 1K Hertz on the entry model, but those are like $200. And like I said, for 120 bucks, it's really tough to complain here. Now, the reason I have this at number 10, even though the switches are swappable magnetic switches, they do have the least impressive specs of the bunch, with a total travel distance of 3.8 millimeters down to 0.1 millimeters, but these are made specifically for this keyboard. So if one happens to become faulty, you can't actually buy these separately, and they don't include extras. Just an oddity worth pointing out. Okay, so for each keyboard, we're gonna take a look at the latency test that I ran with this OSLTT, which is an open source latency testing tool, which tests real time end to end latency from the beginning of the keystroke to when it's actuated and registered as an input on your PC, which also factors in switch pre-travel. So you're getting real time results. To quickly show you how this works, using a banana plug, the second I press on on a key, the test begins. The keycap has aluminum tape attached with a crocodile clip to ground it. So when the banana plug comes in contact with the aluminum, it creates that signal to start counting. This is emulating a natural keystroke that for all intents and purposes are acting as an electronic finger in execution. Then the OSLTT reports the time in milliseconds from the beginning of the keystroke to once that key is actuated and registered on your PC. And personally, I prefer using end-to-end -end latency in my tests because it's giving you the most realistic, real-time result of what you would expect while you're gaming, which is why it also factors in pre-travel. Because guess what? That's a part of your natural gaming experience. The second you actuate to when it's registered, you're gonna have more accurate results that way. And taking a look compared to the other Hall Effect Rapid Trigger keyboards that I've compiled today's tests on, this is relatively middle of the pack at under five milliseconds. Again, full end-to-end -end latency, which is why the numbers are a bit higher versus something like an XLAT tool, but you don't game on an XLAT device. You do deal with natural latency from your system overall to when the keystroke is registered on your PC, which is why I went with end-to-end -end testing. And all boards were tested at their highest possible pulling rate, and their lowest possible actuation distance. So you can see how they all compare to each other. So again, at the number 10 spot, if you're looking for a mod friendly Hall Effect board as an upgrade to your current mechanical board, and you've been hearing about all the hype around these rapid trigger benefits, then 120 bucks for the Metal Geek Made 68 is a pretty good price. Of course, you are losing out on the AK polling and the snap tap from their upgraded models. But that's why we have nine other options on the list today. Number nine is a relatively new one. From Lumen Key, this is the Magger 68. And yes, that name is rough for many reasons, but the board itself impressed me overall, which is why I had to include it today. This thing is a tank, 
For a 65% board, the full aluminum body is solid. You could definitely do some damage with this thing. This model is their professional model over their performance one, which has a different case in the highly coveted Gateron Jade Pro switches for $150 total. Visually, I like the three-tone PBT keycaps from like a dark to light gradient, and their use of the transparent caps as accents I think is a really nice touch. It still looks clean despite having four different types of keycaps on here. You can also get this in a white and like a champagne color, which really don't look all too different, but I think the black color I have here is the nicest. We do have three layers of internal dampening and pre lube stabilizers, making these Jade Pros feel even crisper. At 36 grams and adjustable down to 0.1 millimeters with a sensitivity of 0.02 millimeters and the fact that it has AK Hertz pulling rate, the Magger 68 feels lightning fast when gaming and the latency tests show that and it's really one of the fastest keyboards I've tested on this list. And this is one that doesn't do anything new or exciting, right? Traditional 65% layout, no extra buttons or dials, nothing like that. So this definitely blends the line between a gaming keyboard and just a modern, almost custom build, which is really where the market is going more and more. The term gaming is just a buzzword. You can use any keyboard for gaming, but given the rapid trigger, the Jade Pro switches, dynamic keystroke with N key rollover and AK Hertz pulling, this is definitely targeting the gamer who wants a clean, compact build. So for 150 bucks, the quality to performance here on the Magger 68 is top notch. Now for the number eight spot, we're gonna to toss it over to Brian from Bad C Tech. We always collab on these end of year roundups for the last few years now. So he's gonna take number eight. Yo, what's up, Frank? What's good, everybody? Brian here from Bad Seed Tech, and we've definitely seen a lot of Hall Effect keyboards in 2024, thanks to the massive success of Wooting. Coming in at number eight on Frank's list today is one of the more surprising entries this year, the Corsair K70 Pro TKL, which isn't perfect by any means, but definitely shows that they're really trying to be competitive. The big thing for me was the price point of $179.99 for double shot ABS keycaps or $189.99 for double shot PBT. That was surprising not only because they're offering a choice of keycap material, which is rare, but also because I would have expected Corsair to price this board at like 219 or even 229. They did have to control costs in some areas, so we've got the pretty standard plastic lower and aluminum top, but the one that'll be polarizing for a lot of people is that not all the switches on this board are Hall Effect. The main keybed is, but the stuff you use less frequently, like the F row, the nav cluster, the arrows, those are just linear mechanical switches. And sadly, those switches are not hot swap, so if one goes bad, there's no replacing just that switch. The Hall Effect switches are hot swap, though, and because they used a standard magnet position, you can swap these out with some of the more popular aftermarket switches like the Gion Ross. We also get a decent media control cluster in the top right, which you don't see on a lot of the Hall Effect boards. Most of the functions can be assigned right on the hardware. Only a few require IQ, and that's another pretty surprising move from them. They designed this board to where you don't need to have IQ running. You can adjust all your settings like rapid trigger and actuation point, and then just save it to the board and exit IQ completely. It's not as nice nor as deep as the web-based utility, but it is a refreshing change to not have to have a control software running in the background. They gave a lot of thought to internal sound dampening too as most Hall Effect boards don't sound great and overall this build feels really solid in hand. It also performs really well in game. It's not a perfect board, but it is a definite step in the right direction for Corsair, and I always like to encourage stuff like that when I see it. If you're someone who already has a lot of Corsair or IQ stuff in your setup, it's a good pick to keep that going. Thanks so much for having me on today. Hope everybody has a great holiday. Back to you, Frank. Brian nailed it. This is Corsair's best gaming keyboard by far after years and years of me being left disappointed by their recent keyboard releases, but this shows they're listening and improving. The only reason it's not higher on the list today is due to their switches. While we've seen brands in the past like SteelSeries and Cooler Master only opt to have the main 60 keys as Hall Effect and the rest mechanical, it just doesn't make sense to me. And their new MGX switches feel really smooth with the internal two layers of dampening. It's a shame it's not the whole board. And what's even more annoying about that is with those non-Hall Effect switches, they're soldered into the PCB, so they're not hot swap. Again, it's 2024, you'd love to see a full Hall Effect board. But speeds with their MGXs are pretty respectable. And I'm gonna be showing this graph for each board that's on the list today, but just know anything under five milliseconds is really good. So the fact the majority of these are all within that two to three millisecond range of each other means they're more than acceptable for competitive gaming. And you're not gonna really notice that slight difference from board to board. Well, you will from the fastest to the slowest, but you get what I'm saying. 
The K70 Pro TKL does benefit from things like an included magnetic wrist rest, the multimedia dial, and a dedicated gaming mode, which sets the board to 8K Hz pulling, disables the Windows key, and sets the RGB static. But this also has an SOCD mode, which they call Flash Tap with the latest version of iQ. At 190 bucks, it's definitely got some stiff competition on the market, but it's a good option from this year at the number eight spot. Number seven is a butte, and this is when things start to get fun. This is the Ponage Zen Blade, a fully aluminum 65% board with these aggressive geometric grooves and angles that really makes this stand out from the rest and reminds me a lot of something we'd see in the custom space. But this is a fully pre-built board for 199. Honestly, in terms of physical design, this is one of my favorites of the year. It's a platinum colorway, they call it, with thick double shot PBT keycaps and a red accented weight underneath. Everything about this just screams premium. And this could have easily gone for like $400 if this released back in 2020. How far we've come. One of the things I really like is the fact that there's no software. If you want to adjust the rapid trigger or the RGB, they have a web-based app, which is the way to go and makes customizing everything a breeze as it saves onto the board itself. No downloading required. For the Gateron G2.0 switches, they're buttery smooth and quiet with their pre-lubed palm stem and are adjustable from 0.1 to 4 millimeters. We also have factory lube stabilizers and two layers of internal dampening. All in all, feels really nice to use. While it is just 1K Hertz pulling, we do still hit under five milliseconds end-to-end -end latency, which, as I said previously, still feels lightning fast in use, especially with the switches being fully adjustable from the 0.1 millimeter actuation. Ponage doesn't have an SOCD mode or a four action dynamic keystroke ability, so they keep it pretty basic with the Hall Effect features here. I'm not gonna personally knock it for lack of SOCD. That's a controversial topic as it is. It's getting banned more and more anyways. So that's gonna be more of a bonus feature if anything. The only thing I will knock the Zenblade for, and it might sound dumb, is the USB-C cutout on the back is very, very tiny. Like nine out of 10 of my custom cables didn't fit, so I wound up just using their stock cable, which is really not a big deal, but would have really been nice to complement the board with a cool flashy cable, but they just don't fit. But zero complaints of actual issues with its performance. It looks killer. Factory lube job on the switches and stabilizers is a great touch. It's tuned really well and is just awesome at number seven today. Now for number six, we're gonna go back to Liam from Aim Adapt. He was featured in our top 10 gaming mice video, and he's gonna be showcasing the fastest gaming keyboard on this list. What's up guys, my name's Liam, also known as Aim Adapt. Pulsar's first Hall Effect gaming keyboard has been very impressive, and I'm gonna break down for you why the PC MK2 HE TKL deserves a spot on this list. Just the general aesthetic of this keyboard it looks very clean, and it does come with their premium filling at double shot PBT keycaps. The build consists of a top aluminum tray, which the switches themselves sit inside of, and it has a really low form factor, so it doesn't feel too thick or too high up, and it has nice rounded edges, so it sits really low to the ground and it's very comfortable to use over long periods of time. On the back of the case, it does have a transparent bottom tray where you can see the custom design for the silicone gasket on the inside with their branding on it, and then it does have these three silicone feet down here at the bottom, two up here at the top, and it does have these adjustable feet to adjust the angle of the keyboard, and both different settings also have rubberized feet on the bottoms of them. Pulsar has also teamed up with Gateron to create their own custom magnetic switch. They do come pre-lubed, have a dual rail design, and the actuation force is rated around 30 GF, so the feeling of these switches are very lightweight, yet they're still very responsive for gaming. They also made it really easy to open this case up as all you have to do is remove three screws down here at the bottom and three at the top to access the internals. They also are conveniently using a web-based driver to make the accessibility and customization of this board that much more easy. It allows you to make adjustments to the keys, adjust the RGB, and they even have a macro editor in here. And for the performance, you can come in here and easily adjust the sensitivity to fine tune either individual keys or them in selected groups. And it allows you to adjust the rapid trigger from as low as 0.1 millimeters 
all the way up to four millimeters, making adjustments in 0.1 millimeter increments. And then it also allows you to individually control separately the release and the repress on the rapid trigger functions. One of the most impressive things about this keyboard is the performance driver. It does come with an 8,000 Hertz polling rate up to 6K scanning. This has been one of the lowest latency boards that I have tested to date. And it does allow you to come into the software and make adjustments to the polling rate if you are having any type of instability issues with your system. So the Pulsar PCMK2HE is pretty much a new modern re-release of the original PCMK that came out a few years ago that was very, very under the radar. This of course, not to be confused with their X board that came out over the summer that I really liked. And honestly, I wish this took more cues from that because this design here is just kind of basic and boring. However, despite the lack of a visual wow factor, they make up for it in pure performance with their custom gather on switches, adjustable from 0.1 to 4 millimeters and our north south pole hot swappable, which is cool, combined with their 8K Hertz pulling rate that results in the best end to end latency times we've seen at just 1.54 milliseconds. That makes this the fastest keyboard I've used. Pulsar also uses a web based client instead of software, which is a plus. And of course, has a full array of rapid trigger functions and an SOCD mode called Quick Tap. So you combine rapid trigger with SOCD at 8K Hertz, and you've got no excuses not to come out on top. So if its looks aren't a deal breaker for you and you're fine with the plain Jane look, the PC MK2 HE at 159 is a really, really good deal for pure raw speed and performance at a more than acceptable price. Now, halfway through at number five today is a really unique keyboard in a league of its own on this list. That's gonna be the Nufi Air 60 HE. This is the gaming version of their Air 60 lineup and other boards that are more productivity focused, but this special HE model makes this the world's first low profile Hall Effect keyboard at 8K Hertz. It's in a really unique position for such a small, compact, low profile board to have those gaming features and yet it's made of an aluminum top frame with a translucent ABS bottom. It also has these nice accented keycaps that are transparent with cool icons just to match the overall aesthetic, smooth thin bezels around, and a matching L-shaped USB-C cable on the left side. This, by the way, is also designed to be used as an upgrade over your laptop keyboard as it fits perfectly on top. This also has a three mode switcher on the backside for Mac, PC, and a gaming mode, which you can have save preset settings, thanks again to their web-based client. I'll scream it from the mountains, web-based over downloadable software is the way to go. Inside are low profile Jade Pro switches, which are a fully palm material, adjustable from 0.1 to 3.3 millimeters, which feel even faster since they're low profile as it is. Holding its own at 2.33 milliseconds is great to see. Nufi claims just 0.1 millisecond latency from their factory tests that are not end to end. My tests factor in the pre-travel, like I said, but yet it still comes back with blazing fast results. Everything about this is just really, really well executed. We also have three layers of internal dampening with its gasket mount design. Yes, this is also gasket mounted for a better feel and factory loop stabilizers. Just ticking all the boxes. The Air 60 HE also boasts dynamic keystroke settings and an SOCD mode called HyperTap, which again, combining low profile switches at 8K feels incredible. Nufi pulled off one of the best gaming keyboards of the year. And even though the market for a low profile board isn't as demanding, it's also not as saturated. So this stands out. 140 bucks for the Jade Pros is a no brainer given the specs. And they also make this in a regular Jade Switch model for just $120. Either way, you will not be disappointed. Now at number four is a keyboard I really, really enjoyed and the haters were quick to dismiss this when it launched, but hey, that's okay, they're all wrong. This is the Asus ROG Falchion Ace HFX, featuring their new Prelude HFX switches in their Falchion lineup as this marks the third iteration of the Falchion family. And taking a look at first glance, this is definitely the love child of those first two models, combining the design language into this mid-height 65% body. One of the things that I really enjoyed being included with the original Falchion was the dual case and cover. This returns and allows the keyboard to sit inside, which not only improves acoustics by acting as a dampening layer to absorb contact on your desk, 
But also, if you have pets or your setup just tends to get extra dusty, this can slide up top of the keycaps when you're not using it to keep it protected. Now, one of the reasons Asus gets flack is because of their Armory Crate software that I too try to avoid installing when I can. And what's so great about the Ace HFX is the fact that pretty much everything can be done and controlled on the board itself. On the backside is a button that lets you cycle between five different functions from volume, media playback, keyboard lighting, your switch's actuation adjustment, and a custom function that you can create yourself. All five of these setting indicators are gonna glow on top of the board with that light strip so you know what setting you're actually on. Now, how you adjust those settings then is with the built-in touch panel on the back. They have a touch sensitive slider, letting you interact with the functions from sliding your finger back and forth, which lets you adjust these settings up and down. And you can double tap the slider for certain functions as well for like muting or turning the RGB off. So the button and slider go hand in hand, pun intended. And then on the right side of the board is a dedicated rapid trigger physical switch. This is cool because if you want to only enable rapid trigger when you're gaming and not just have it on 24 seven, this lets you quickly turn it on and off with a literal flip of a switch. New to Asus are these HFX switches that are factory lubed, have a polycarbonate upper housing with a palm stem and palm bottom housing with a 0.1 to four millimeter total travel distance enhanced by the five internal dampening layers to the gasket mounted board. At the AK Hertz polling setting, this comes in third total at just 2.19 milliseconds end to end, right there with the best of the best for pure speed and performance. And again, I don't get the hate this received when I reviewed it. It's a really, really good gaming keyboard that doesn't require software, has onboard adjustments or everything you need software for, feels and sounds really, really good, and it's easily a top contender of the year, which is why I have it at number four. Maybe $200 is a bit more than I like it to be, sure, especially given the competition, but anyone who has this or buys it is gonna love it. Number three today is an exception, and I'll explain that in a second. This is the Razer Huntsman V3 Pro TKL keyboard. This technically released in fall of 2023, but over the summer, it got a major update in Synapse to enable SOCD, which is what got it banned in games and really shook up the entire gaming scene in July when all this happened. This is the board responsible for the SOCD boom and believe it or not, overtook every single keyboard in the esports scene for being the number one most used gaming keyboard among all pro players. That's a hell of an accolade. Their Huntsman lineup is pretty popular as it is with the TKL in mini versions holding spots on millions of people's gaming setups and Razer went nice and simple with these pro models, which I enjoy. The rounded edges and brushed aluminum is always a nice touch. And we have another board that doesn't need software. No synapse required. With their multimedia cluster and the multifunction dial on the top right, not only do you have your standard playback control, but you can set your switch's actuation point and rapid trigger adjustments all on the fly. You have the little LED indicator there so you know your current actuation and you can see your actuation distance in real time. It is kind of confusing at first to remember all the shortcuts. So they do include a helpful little printout that you can keep on hand. Their switches are the Gen 2 analog opticals. And if you remember back to 2018, Razer was one of the first pioneers in the optical space from their original optical huntsman. So they've had six years now of innovation in this space. They have the unique stabilizer bars on each key for extra stability and smoothness, which unfortunately does add to the overall clattery sound and again, adjustable from 0.1 millimeters to four millimeters. Now, interestingly, this is coming in at 4.96 milliseconds on my OSLTT testing. And even though it is a 1K Hertz pulling keyboard, doesn't come anywhere near the 1.7 milliseconds that they have it rated at. Now, again, they're using different testing methods, not end to end like I am, but given a lot of the boards are AK on this list, you can see it does fall behind most of those, but still does come in at under five milliseconds. So despite falling behind the pack into end to end results, Razer did rapid trigger in SOCD right. In fact, so right that like I said before, it's what got it banned in some games because it was just too OP. There's also no denying the impact they've had on the market and the esports scene, which is why it's so highly rated everywhere you look. It may not be the coolest looking or the most budget friendly at $220, but Razer comes to the level of prestige where you know their hardware is gonna be top of the line. Haters can roll their eyes all they want, but as I showed, there's a reason it's the most used gaming keyboard in the entire esports scene. 
Number two is a personal favorite of mine, mainly because I love the design and what iKinix has been doing over the last two years. But here we have the iKinix EZ63, a compact 60% layout that manages an arrow cluster and definitely takes a lot of inspiration from the custom scene in the best of ways. This is also the keyboard that at Computex beat out the Wooting 60HE in Wooting's own booth where they had the XLAT set up and challenged other companies. And guess what? The EZ63 came on ahead and beat Wooting at their own game. This is another fully aluminum build with plenty of accents that takes inspiration from Gundam. And like we saw earlier with the Magger 68, we have three tone PBT keycaps that visually all meshes nicely and still manages to stay pretty minimal. I will say the renders online make the caps look a bit darker than they are in person, but I don't mind. They also make this in an EZ60 model that doesn't have the arrow cluster like we have here on the EZ63 at the same price point, but this is definitely the way to go here. Now the TLC doesn't just end with the visuals. This has three layers of internal dampening inside, in addition to it being gasket mounted, which you can see with a peek at the exposed sides, providing a nice soft flex during use. Now where it gets really interesting is with the internals. This is a full 8K pulling board with the option of either their own custom Star Trail switches or Jade Pros being available. I have their Star Trail switches in my unit and not only is it adjustable from 0.1 millimeters to four millimeters, but it has 0.05 millimeter accuracy. That's gonna provide some crazy precision and speed. And as you can see at the lower third of our results tied with the Wooding HE, funny enough, coming in at 3.33 milliseconds. They too have a full web-based app for adjusting the board, again, up to 8K Hertz, has the 0.05 millimeter rapid trigger sensitivity, an SOCD mode, and overall with the gasket mounting and factory lubing, feels and sounds incredible. The Star Trail Switch model for the EZ63 is $180, and I'd say is more than worth it. If you wanted to upgrade to the Jade Pros, it's an extra $40 tacked on, but man, I just personally love what iKinix has been doing over the last few years. They continually push out and make new interesting boards, designs, and layouts. And they are to the keyboard scene what Pulsar is to the mouse scene. Just new models and shapes 24-7, something for everyone. I can't get enough. And then the number one spot for the top Hall Effect gaming keyboard of 2024, you already know, is the Wooting 80 HE. This came out back in September, two plus years after the release of the 60HE that exploded in popularity, but now, as the name implies, we have a brand new layout in the compact 80%. Now, taking a look, you'll see this board I have is their special edition Transparent Ghost. It's a plastic case. And there's a few different options and materials that you can pick from on their site, so you can have it look exactly the way you want from three different plastic cases and then three different zinc alloy cases. Price will shoot up from 200 to 290 from plastic to metal, but they are really, really well designed and each have their own benefits. I like the Ghost for the visuals and the Thaki sound profile, while the other black zinc alloy case I have looks super clean and feels like a tank. Nothing else too crazy about the board itself. No dedicated multimedia controls or a dial, but they do have this little LED accent strip, which can be customized in their utility. And I just use it to show the current actuation level real time. Speaking of which, we have their Lecker V2 switches, which are a factory pre lubed by Wooting with an adjustable actuation from 0.1 to four millimeters. And these Leckers are the L60, which are the heavier 60 gram option, but they also have the L45 Lecker, which is a lighter 45 gram option. I like the L60s personally that are stock. They also benefit from the internal three layers of dampening and the board being gasket mounted. So it's got a really, really nice give during use. Also pretty muted acoustically. But when it comes to gaming and you think of a Hall Effect analog board, Wooting's always been the one company that comes to mind. For my latency test after native AK Hertz polling, right at 3.33 milliseconds. However, when you enable their tachyon mode, which optimizes the speed and reduces latency, it goes down to 1.65 milliseconds, which is still crazy fast for end-to-end -end results. I have talked to some of my friends in the gaming space and they all said the same thing, that, you know, maybe it's placebo, but Wooting just feels faster. It does. And Optimum Tech said it best. Wooting just does it right. From all their years making these analog keyboards and changing the keyboard scene after the 60HE really took off, 
This just feels better than the competition. Their utility is also a reason why so many companies nowadays are going for a web-based client, since they were kind of the pioneers for that in the space. You can save everything onto the board itself, adjust the actuation, dynamic keystroke, SOCD mode called Snappy Tappy, they have Mod Tap, all the gaming settings that you could want out of a Hall Effect analog board, they have, and then some. This has been nothing short of impressive. Wooting deserves all the praises that they've been getting, and no matter what setup of case and switches you opt to go with, you're probably gonna never wanna go back to anything else. Wooting and their 80 HE takes the number one spot on my list as the top Hall Effect gaming keyboard of 2024. Well, if you're still watching, thank you. I know this was a long one. We usually do just top five keyboards, but there have been so many good releases this year, we had to extend it to top 10. However, we're still not done because there are two keyboards that are still worthy of the honorable mention. One of those is the Keychron Q1HE, a wireless Hall Effect board that looks super nice with the familiar Keychron Q1 body that we've been familiar with since it released in 2021, but now gets a wireless Hall Effect treatment. And all in all, it's a really solid board. Like I said, it looks nice, feels really nice, has a volume dial built in on the top right. And I think the reason for me personally that I have it as an honorable mention and not in the top 10 is because the Q1 is just tired at this point. We've had the Q1, the Q1 V2, the Q1 Pro, the Q1 Max, now the Q1 HE. I just wish it brought something more to the table instead of just adding Hall Effect switches. Funny enough, this was tied with Glorious for the number one spot on my top gaming keyboards of 2021 list. And that's perfectly fitting because today's other honorable mention is the GMMK Pro 3 from Glorious. From number one spots to honorable mentions, but that just goes to show how much has changed and how much innovation we've had over the years. Now the GMMK Pro 3 gets the honorable mention because of Glorious and their boardsmith and how customizable their boards are. They have a full configurator where you can pick and choose literally every single aspect of the board top, bottom, in and out that no other company does. You're literally building your dream custom keyboard that they build for you. It's wild and pretty impressive. You can pick your case, the color, the material, your PCB and PCB layout. You can customize the gaskets. You can customize the gasket firmness. You can pick your plate, badges, knobs, bunch of different switches. Literally everything can be customized, but you are paying a premium price if you want to fully deck it out. Like for example, the wireless 75% model that you see here, this costs $502, which is bonkers and just not worth it whatsoever. But you still can configure a board exactly the way you like for under $200, customized exactly to your liking without going super crazy with all the extras here. So 200, 500 plus, and they really do the same thing. So that's what makes Boardsmith unique. But even still, at around $200, you're then competing with the Wootings and the Razors alike at this price range. Okay, now we're gonna do sound tests of all 10, well, 12 keyboards with the honorable mentions included, so you could hear how they all sound with their particular configuration.
So all right guys, that'll wrap it up for the top 10 Hall Effect gaming keyboards of 2024, highlighting some of the best releases that came out this year. Again, shout out to Brian from Bad C Tech and Liam from AimAdapt for their spots on today's video. If you wanna check anything you saw, all the keyboards we listed for you guys in the description down below so you can check them out. And like I was saying, with the holidays here, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, definitely keep an eye on the prices. We should be seeing some price drops on a few of the good ones. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on all socials at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.